Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be discussing some of the interesting CNC machines that I saw at Maker Fair. Now, obviously there were a couple of more of them there, but I didn't really feel like they were all that impressive, so I didn't document them. But these were the things that really stuck out to me as being awesome and also interesting, so let's dive in. First of all, I finally got to meet Apollo from Carbide 3D. Awesome guy. Sadly, he had to run out early on the second day of Maker Faire, so I wasn't able to interview him, but hopefully sometime in the near future, I can maybe get him to shoot some video for me or something like that. But regardless, it was awesome to meet the guy and finally see the product in person. I've been following him and his project with a couple of other people for a long time now and it's ever since the beginning I've just been like drooling over this machine going oh my gosh this is the way the future of desktop CNC machines could be. It's a really nice enclosed machine that's actually quite powerful when it comes to not only the software but also the machine itself. I was really impressed at how quiet it was albeit in the video it is carving out a material called Ren Shape which is used a lot by model makers and prototypers because it's very easy to cut. It still was making barely any noise. This machine, I've seen the cuts that it's made in materials like stainless and titanium, and I was actually really impressed with the quality of the cuts. Mind you, the machine had to run slow, but the fact that it is capable of cutting little parts out of that is amazing. It's, it's, it's nice. So that was a real standout to me. Being that I'm a CNC machinist, it has a lot of elements that I like. And I also like the way that they've designed some of their fixtures, like the flip jig, so you can machine one side and flip it over and the location's already done for you. You run the back side of the program and you've created a finished part. You might have a little bit of a uh, seam line that you have to sand, but I mean, it's short of having a four axis or even a five axis trunnion in there, which it really doesn't have the space for and would add a lot to the cost. It's really impressive. Next up were the two products by Pocket NC. Now the first one is an interesting five axis milling center. Now, considering that most five axis mach machining centers are huge, expensive industrial machines and they're just absolutely beautiful to watch, I'll have like a link in the description to a playlist that I'll put together of like probably some of the most incredible five axis machining I've ever seen. It's amazing. And it was actually quite encouraging to see a company trying to build a five axis machine. Although I did have some issues with it. First of all, it was with their demo. Thank you. I exhaust. So how's business? It's good, you know. Uh, so we just got our TikTok we did that we think we're pretty tired of we're filling our pre-orders. We have got like a lot of the the main problem was problems for their impeller demo were one, the tool was chattering like crazy. So for somebody who's a machinist, they're gonna take one look at that and go, something ain't right there. And I'm not sure if it was the tooling, the feeds and speeds, lack of coolant or what. I mean, it, it was cutting an impeller, which was impressive in aluminum, but it just sounded like garbage when it was doing it. And the, the other bummer was I asked them what software they used because they had mentioned it comes with a free year of Fusion 360 and I'm like, oh cool, so what software does it come? And they're like, oh, we didn't program it in Fusion, we used Mastercam. And I'm like, oh, that's great. For those who don't know, Mastercam's professional grade CNC software and this stuff will easily run you $10,000 plus for a seat. Especially if you wanna do multi-axis machining, they really soak you for it. That, that aside, I, I do have to say though that I was impressed with the fact that they were trying to make a five axis machine. It's just a couple of other issues I had with it were there were no chip covers, which would have been really easy to do even if it was just a piece of rubber that helped keep chips out of the lead screw. It really, 
really helps. And then the other thing was they, they took all the time to use precision linear rails, which are like amazing, but they weren't using ball screws. And I don't even know if they were using backlash compensating lead screws. And I felt like maybe it's a pre-production model and they're going to work that out. But that was kind of a disappointment. It's like the Nomad had really nice trapezoidal multi-start screws, kind of like what the Ultimaker has for the Z-axis, really high quality motion components. And I was looking at this amazing five axis machine and they're using regular 60 degree, I mean, it was probably precision threaded rod, but that was a little bit of a letdown. I don't know if design constraints would not allow for ball screws, but if they could put that in there, it might drive the cost up a little bit, but it would really improve their accuracy probably their cut quality and just make the machine that much more amazing. Another product they had was called the FR4 mill. This was actually kind of interesting, although I did have some issues with it, kind of like with their five axis machine. This was literally a small milling machine that was made from machine and which actually was a pretty interesting use of it. Another thing that I thought was interesting but could be problematic was the fact that the machine literally soldered the components together. I mean, maybe I'm thinking of this as you can be cutting harder materials, but just the idea of soldering it together it sounds like it wouldn't be super accurate. Maybe for what they had intended in the price point of $400 wasn't, you know. That big of a deal that it was like cool concept, but I don't know if that's gonna last. And then the other thing that was really kind of frustrating was their spindle setup. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. The the thing is they're relying on the brushless motors bearings to take all the force of milling while well, they've got the tool stuck out like this far and they're cutting some kind of hardwood. And it was chattering like crazy, and I'm thinking to myself, that motor is not going to last a long time and those bearings are going to die really soon. If you look at a commercial CNC setup, they actually will have massive bearings that are designed to take the load of cutting on both ends of the spindle. And they'll have them under compression and that's what it takes to withstand the side loads. This thing was not set up like that. So I really don't know how long that motor would last. And that was a huge disappointment. I obviously understand it's a lower priced machine, but it, it kind of falls into the category of, unless you're gonna be cutting like maybe really thin sheet ABS or something, even then you might have chatter issues. I mean, it was, it, it was kind of a letdown, like you guys didn't think that through, but then again, I guess if it's designed as a hacker machine, oh well. And then lastly was the Tormach 440 CNC machine. Now mind you, Tormach has been around for a while. They're at like practically every show that I've been to and I don't have personal experience with their products, so I can't really speak for them. I have seen them in action and they are interesting, but I get the idea that there are some people that like their products and some people that don't. If you talk to Brad over at Tactical Keychains, he could probably give you a 30 minute rant video about why he doesn't like his Tormach. But if you jumped over to John at NYC CNC, he could probably give you a 30 minute praise video about it. And, and you know what, at the end of the day, does that make either of their opinions right or wrong? No, I don't think so. I mean, some people like vanilla and some people like chocolate ice cream. Does that make their opinion wrong? No. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag on their products. I don't have any experience, so I can't speak on it. That's that. That said, though, their machine was actually quite nice, the 440. It was somewhat compact. I really liked the fact that it had an enclosure around it, being that machining is a very messy operation, and these chips will find ways to fly into just about everything in the room. The only drawback was, as shown, the machine without the fog buster, without an air compressor, would run you, without tax and shipping as well, $10,500.
pretty expensive. Now mind you, that includes the machine, the frame, the stand, but you could just buy the machine itself for just shy of seven grand, but then you gotta deal with all the mess. So that in a nutshell is some of the stuff that I saw. Also CNC router parts was there. They were there last time. They pretty much sell plans and machines, but they didn't really have any specs and stuff that they had. It was more kind of like pretty much to do with their stuff, which is cool. I mean, they had a CNC plasma cutter, which was interesting, and they had a couple CNC routers, but there wasn't a whole lot of information on the machine, so I couldn't really do much in the way, you know, finding out information about them. And the other thing that was kind of frustrating was the booth was always packed with people because they were, as they were building ukuleles on their plasma cutter and their CNC routers, they were giving them away. So no knock on that. It's just their booth was just absolutely slammed with people. So I couldn't really get up close and see stuff. But it was interesting to see that you could build, say, a plasma cutter in your garage if you're a fabricator. It might be very helpful. If you're a woodworker, you have a CNC router, things like that. So I hope you guys found this video kind of interesting. Um, like I said, it wasn't super in depth, but it was kind of just my opinions on some of the stuff that I had seen. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, please let me know and I will definitely do them. In the meantime, I'm going to work on finishing up editing any other Maker Fairish videos and get them up there. So that way it's not three months from now and I go, oh shoot, I forgot to upload that video about that. So I hope you guys can uh, bear with the fact that things are going to be a little bit like here's three videos, here's two videos as I get all that stuff done. But I promise I'm going to get back to more regular stuff. I've got some upcoming videos about the GoPro rig that I was running around with that people seem to enjoy, um, things like that. So hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time on Make It With Calvin.